All right, we want to go on now to page 11, and we want to start at this particular moment another teaching on the will, wisdom, and knowledge of God. And for this, we will want to go back to the book of Proverbs, and we will begin back here to walk through uh, most of Proverbs and pick up statements that you need to know about the value of God's word, what God says about his word, and what it means to God and how he releases that to us. And it can be done anywhere in the Bible. You could run this from Genesis to Revelation, but years ago God took me to Proverbs and showed me just in one book the value of his word and what it should mean to us today. The will the word, the wisdom, and knowledge, and understanding of God. Proverbs chapter 1, verses 2 through 9. To know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of God's understanding, to receive the instruction of God's wisdom, justice, judgment, and equity, to give subtly to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion, a wise man will hear. You need to underline that. Man is always mankind. They will hear. They are open to God. The purpose of being baptized with the Holy Ghost is that the Holy Ghost may lead, teach, and guide us. But just because we're baptized with the Holy Ghost doesn't mean we're going to listen to him or follow him. The wise man will hear and will increase learning. We're always learning. We will be increasing to the end. That is, we will never have all the knowledge of God that is available for us. We will just continue to learn it. Now, most of this has been caused by sin. The perfect plan of God was that our moms and dads would have all been genuinely saved, baptized with the Holy Ghost, would have had their wisdom and knowledge, and therefore, from the, a child, a baby, they would have raised us to know the same truth. And we would be so far ahead where we are today. I didn't get saved till I was 29 as a drunkard. Had my parents known all of this and been able to raise me, at age 29 I would have been a whiz-bang instead of a sinner. A wise man will hear, will increase learning. A man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. To understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. The fear means the wholesome respect, adoration, and worship of the Lord, not fear to be afraid of. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise God's wisdom and instruction. Persons who is born again and filled with the Holy Ghost, if he's not studying to show himself approved, he's a fool because he's despising the increase of God's wisdom and knowledge and understanding. Verse 8, My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. For they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head, and chains about thy neck. All right, let's move on to chapter 1, verse 20 through 33. This is especially good. I've used this in counseling a lot with people. It's also gone out over email dozens of times all over the world. Verse 20, God's wisdom cries without, that is, out in the street, out in the open. She, referring to wisdom, utters her voice out in the streets. It's available for everybody in the world. She, God's wisdom, cries in the chief places of concourse, in the business, everywhere there's anything going in the world. The wisdom of God is there and available. In the opening of the gates in the city, she utters her words, saying, this is what his wisdom says, how long, you simple ones, will you love simplicity? And the scorners, how long will you delight in your scorning? And fools, how long will you continue to hate God's knowledge? Turn you, that's a choice. That's the will, taking charge. Turn you at my reproof, my correction, my word, my doctrine. Behold, I will then pour out my spirit unto you, I will make known my words unto you. If you will turn and seek and search for it, you'll get it. 
Why? And now for this, I'm going to do a drawing here. You may want to do this on the back side of one of your sheets. We'll start it out for you. And you can do this anytime, anywhere in the Bible. Because it's all over the Bible. God says man's response. Okay. Verse 24. God said, I have called. I have called. Who has he called? He's called everybody. That's why he put a conscience within us. It's called a God conscience, an awareness of all of his basic moral laws. We can't escape it. That's why Romans 1.20 says that all the heathen, all the ungodly at the final judgment will be without excuse because the wisdom and knowledge of God is already implanted in to recognize him as the creator, designer, governor of the universe. I have called. What do they do? Yeah, you refused. That's an act of the will. We don't want to hear God. I've already got a religion. I already have a church. My pastor says, well, I read a book the other day. Well, great. I have stretched out my hand. <coughs> I called. Now I'm stretching out my hands to get a hold of you. No man regarded. They didn't want his hand. They didn't want to answer his call. There's a way that seemeth right unto man. The ends thereof are the ways of death. You have set it not, my counsel. You set at not. Not sure that's right. Spelling. You said it not. My counsel. I stretched, you refused. I put out my hand, no man regarded, and you said it not. You set it aside, made nothing out of it, of my counsel. You would none. You wanted none of my reproof. I don't make any difference how you cut reproof. It has to do with this truth. It's called correction, instruction, judgment, word. And he says, you wanted none of my reproof. So my reproof, my truth, my correction, my word, you wanted none of it. You didn't want it. All right. Now, when your calamity comes, and let's just label where calamity is going to come, dear friends, spiritually, physically, and materially. When your calamity comes in one of these three areas, and that's the only three areas you can have it in, God says, I will laugh. He's gone through this whole thing. They didn't want it. Then when the judgment comes, then when the calamity comes, he laughs. He mocks them, in other words. And he says that the next time. When your fear comes, this is real fear in all three of these areas. I will mock you. 
You get an idea here of the two sides? And this was Old Testament. Imagine how much worse this is today. When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction comes as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you. And isn't it interesting, dear friends, your unsaved friends or some of your religious friends, when things begin to happen, they know who to call, don't they? Your phone begins to ring when they're knee deep in the quagmire. They didn't want your advice. They didn't want your counsel. That's what God is saying because he's working through us to reach them. They didn't want to come to your church. When all this anguish comes upon you, then they shall call upon me, God says, but I will not answer. Because they're not calling for the right reason. They're not coming in humility. They're not coming with a broken and contrite heart. They want to get out of the trouble. That's all they want, is to get out of the trouble. They will seek me early. They'll do everything in the world to get to me. They'll double their fastings. They'll crawl on broken glass for two miles. They'll not find me. Why? You need to put the word why right at the end of verse 28. Why don't they find God? And here it is, friends. For that they hated my knowledge. They did not choose the fear of the Lord. They would or wanted none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. Therefore, bottom line, shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them spiritually, physically, and materially, and the prosperity of fools, many of them today in the churches who have been prospered, think it's of God, and that prosperity destroys them, dear friends, because their love is in their prosperity and not in God. That's why Jesus said it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter heaven. He didn't say it was impossible. It's very hard because their prosperity becomes their God. I don't need God. I have retirement. I have my family covered with all kinds of insurance. I have all kinds of medical I'm protected in every way. I have money in the bank. I have savings. I have all kinds of things to take care of me. I've got a beautiful home, beautiful car, cottage at the lake. Everything's fine. I don't need God. But I'll tell you, dear friends, I've counseled with enough of them. When those things start to crumble and losses come, guess who they call up on the phone? Oh, Bob, you remember me? Hey, I'm getting calls in the last week. I'm getting emails in the last week from people I haven't heard from in 57 years. I'm getting these calls are coming in now, emails are coming in. And now, now they want help. Verse 33, this is our bottom line. But whoso hearkeneth, listens, pays attention, gives his mind and spirit unto me, shall dwell safely, spiritually, physically, and materially, and shall be quiet from that fear of evil. Chapter 2, verses 1 through 9. My son, my daughter, if, circle the word if, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee so that you would incline your heart unto my wisdom, apply your heart to my understanding, yea, if you would cry after my knowledge and lift up your voice for my understanding, if you would seek my wisdom and knowledge like you would for silver in your paycheck, if you would search for my wisdom and knowledge like you would for hid treasure, Listen, if pastor stood up tonight and said, I just discovered there's $30 billion buried under this church. I need your help. We'd grab a shovel. We'd grab a steamroller. We'd destroy this building. We wouldn't go home until we dug it up. 
Well, can you come Monday night and listen to the Word of God for three hours? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm awful busy. I got a lot of other things going on Sundays too. He compares it to the riches of the world, doesn't he? If you would seek after my wisdom as silver, search for her as you would for hid treasures, here's the result. Then thou shalt understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Four, the Lord giveth wisdom out of his mouth, cometh knowledge and understanding. He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. He's a buckler to them that are walking uprightly with the truth. He keeps the paths of judgment and preserves the way of his saints. If you pay attention to God, then thou shalt understand righteousness and judgment and equity. Yea, you'll understand every good path that God has for you. Chapter 3, verse 1 through 10. My son, my daughter, forget not my laws. Spiritual. Let your heart, let is to permit by choice your heart, keep, keep. you got to know it to keep it. Keep my commandments. The results, he tells you, length of days and long life and peace shall they add to you. Let not my mercy and my truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them on the tables of thine heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man, <coughs> which was said of Jesus over in Luke 2.52. Trust, have faith, confidence in the Lord, 100%, with all your heart, because if you haven't got 100% going for God, then there's 100% against going for God. God doesn't have any percentages. There was a song written back in the 30s, a jazz song entitled, Is You Is or Is You Ain't My Baby? <coughs> I think Duke Ellington had it out. Is you is or is you ain't my baby? And that's all God's asking. Are you? Are you not mine? Because if you've got 5% somewhere else, you ain't mine. You're 100% over there. That's the way God is designed. The will is either committed 100% or it's 100% against. Of everything that comes down the pike. All right. Five. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways... Every day, whatever you're doing, acknowledge him. He will direct your paths no matter what your job is. Don't be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord. Depart from evil. For it, the word of God, shall be health. Now the word health is the Hebrew word marpe, M-A-R-P-E, with a little mark behind it. I write it P-A-Y. Marpe, and it's medicine. It's given in Proverbs four different times. My word to you is medicine to your navel and marrow to your bones. Spiritually, physically, and materially, my word is medicine to you. Honor the Lord with thy substance, with the first fruits of all thy increase, and so shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. Well, that was under the law of tithing. Today, everything we have belongs to the Lord. It may be in our name, we may be paying for it, but it belongs to God. So we give unto the Lord. We give freely out of a heart. That's the only thing he recognizes. Practically the whole church worldwide that calls itself the Church of the Lord Jesus Christ has put people under the law by tithing, trying to extract 10% of all their income. That's not of God in the New Testament. That's back under law. Galatians will tell you if you're keeping all the law and yet you offend in one point, you are no longer in Christ, whosoever you are. You are fallen from Christ. For Christ has fulfilled the law. And we don't want to get tangled up with that. Chapter 3, verse 13 through 26. Happy is a man or the woman that finds God's wisdom. And happy is the man and woman that gets God's understanding. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver, and the gain thereof, uh, gain thereof better, finer than fine gold. 
She is more precious than rubies. And all the things that you could desire in this world are not to be compared under God's wisdom and knowledge. I was in Traverse City years ago when I was an evangelist. And I happened to be free the night, that the Saturday night, that they had a speaker come in who happened to be the same doctor from Lansing that I told you offered me the $80,000. And he was the speaker for the full gospel businessmen that night. And so I went to hear him because I already knew him. And the whole advertisement that they'd been pounding for a month that this doctor was going to come up and talk about gold, silver, and precious stones. And everybody thought, man, here's a Christian man who's successful. He's made a ton of bucks, and he's going to tell us how to invest. He went right into Proverbs, pecked each one of these verses out on gold, silver, and precious stones. And this is what he hit him with, was the word of God. You'd never seen so many disappointed men in your life had their little ballpoint pens and pads out ready to find out where to invest, what to buy in, where to get the stock. He's talking about his word. Length of days is in her right hand of God's wisdom and knowledge, and her left hand riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and her paths are peace. She is a tree of life, his wisdom, to them that lay hold upon her. The tree is there. You've got to go lay hold upon God's wisdom. Happy is everyone that retains her or his wisdom and knowledge. The Lord by wisdom has founded the earth. By understanding hath he established the heavens. <clears throat> by his knowledge the depths are broken up, and the clouds drop down the dew. My son, let not them, the word, the understanding, the wisdom and knowledge, depart from your eyes. Keep God's sound, which is the word lot, well in the Greek, it's logical, simple, orderly. That's the word sound in the Greek. Let not God's word depart from your eyes. Keep that simple, logical, orderly wisdom and discretion of God. So shall thy life be unto thy soul, and grace be unto thy neck. Then thou shalt walk in thy way safely, thy foot shall not stumble. When thou liest down, thou shalt not be afraid. Yea, thou shalt lie down, and thy sleep shall be sweet. Be not afraid of sudden fear, neither of destruction of the wicked when it cometh. For the Lord shall be thy confidence, and shall keep thy foot from being taken. Withhold not good from them to whom it is due, when it is in the power of thy hand to do it. Say not unto thy neighbor, Go and come again, and tomorrow I give thee, when thou hast it by thee. Devisest not evil against thy neighbor, seeing he dwelleth securely by thee. Strive not with man without cause, if he have done thee no harm. And now let's go to verse 35. The wise with the wisdom and knowledge of God shall inherit glory, but shame shall be the promise of fools that didn't want the word of God. Chapter 4, verse 1 through 13. <clears throat> Hear ye, children, the instruction of a father, and attend to no understanding. Yes, Father. He said, I give you good doctrine. The same good as when he pronounced in the Hebrew, after he had made the creation, God looked upon it and said, it is good. I give you good doctrine. Forsake ye not my spiritual laws. For I was my father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. My father taught me also, and he said unto me, let your heart retain my words. Keep my commandments and live spiritually, physically, materially. Get my wisdom. Get means you've got to go for it. Get my understanding. Forget it not. Neither decline, back away, or depart from the words of my mouth. Once you hide it in your heart, don't back off from it because of situations or circumstances. That's the time when you begin to stand strong with it. Forsake her not, my wisdom, she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. My wisdom is the principal main thing. Therefore, get my wisdom, and with all you're getting, get the understanding of it. I've run into many people. I just worked with a, a set of papers last night. I worked for about three hours on them. It wasn't given to me, but it was given to another person. It was a strong rebuke from a person in a church. And the rebuke was against the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And the person had taken a writing that I have done in the study of the Holy Ghost and had shredded it all to pieces and uh, 
then handed it back to this other person, and the person asked me if I would write him and make comments on it. Well, I, I took about 12 pages to answer his 13 pages. But the thing the person was involved in was not getting the understanding of the Word of God that he was reading that I had put on the paper. And I opened up on the sheet <clears throat> for this other man to read, but I was really writing to the, other, to the original man, who I haven't met or don't know. But I thought perhaps the man I'm writing to could use this in his dialogue with him. I said, working with a person who is not baptized with the Holy Ghost, trying to discuss the spiritual things with a person who is not baptized with the Holy Ghost, is like trying to work with salvation with a sinner who believes he already has salvation figured out. It's the same problem. Trying to work with a sinner who thinks he's already saved, and he's not, that he already has a con contact with God when he doesn't, and he's reading the scriptures and twisting and wrestling them the way he wants to, that's the same thing you find working with people who are against the baptism of the Holy Ghost. It's a separate experience. Jesus said, except you're born again, you can't see, perceive, or understand the kingdom. So the sinner has no way of understanding the kingdom until he comes through the experience. That's God's safeguard on it. That you have to surrender yourself to God, be made clean of sin, and be born again before you can even see, perceive, or understand the kingdom. And so I'm answering this fellow's dissertation against the, the things that I wrote, which were all scriptural that unless you were baptized with the Holy Ghost, there's no way possible you can understand God's teaching about the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You couldn't even understand the value of speaking in tongues. If I stood there and tried to tell you, you wouldn't understand it. You wouldn't get a grip on it. You have to be baptized with the Holy Ghost, have the experience of speaking in tongues, and then you can teach the person what the value of that that he has. I can't convince a sinner of the value of salvation until he gets saved, and I can really show him what he's got. So <clears throat> these things, <clears throat> you realize, you'll battle down the line with people, and, and there's just no way you're going to be able to help them unless they, they want to come around themselves. See, exalt her is wisdom and knowledge, and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor when thou dost embrace her. She shall give to thy head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory shall she deliver to thee. Hear, O my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of your life shall be many. That's in here many times where he will give you long life. I had people say to me all your life, remember now, your dad died when he was 49, your mom died when she was 69, your dad had kidney trouble, your mom had cancer. I said, it's not going to come on me. I'm not operating the way my mom and dad operated. They claimed to be Christians. They weren't filled with the Holy Ghost. They didn't get into the proof of God into the spiritual realm. I'm sorry for mom and dad, but I'm not buying the farm as they bought it. I don't have to. God guarantees us life, a full life. <clears throat> I have taught thee in the way of wisdom. I have led thee in right paths. When thou goest, thy steps shall not be straightened. And when you runnest, thou shalt not stumble. Take fast hold, get a grip upon my instruction, and let her, by wisdom and knowledge, not go. Keep her, for she will be your life. Now let's finish with 4.20 and 22 and take a break. This is very interesting. You can break this down and preach a message off of this. I've done it many times. My son, my sons, daughters, attend. Give attention. Pay attention to my words. Number one. Number two, incline your ear. Make it a habit of listening to my sayings. Number three, let my words not depart from your eyes. Read it. Study it for yourself. Keep them, finally, after you've assembled this, keep them in the midst of your heart. Active, belief, ready to come out. The abundance of the heart, the mouth will be able to speak it out at any moment, any time. Why? Verse 22. For my words are life 
spiritual life unto those that will find them. That's by studying to show yourself approved. My words are spiritual life to those that will find them and health. Here's your word marpe. Medicine to all their flesh. I use this in divine healing. The word of God is your medicine for your own body. Man has invented medicines to take for sickness and disease. God says, my word is for your flesh body. I have the word that will keep you free of sickness and disease. Yes, you'll get old and will eventually die. But we don't have to die of a sickness and disease. The greatest single book in the Bible to have all this concentrated in this way. Chapter 5, simply 1 and 2. My son or my daughter, attend unto my wisdom. Bow your ear to my understanding, that thou may, mayest regard discretion, and that your lips may keep my knowledge. God is working through us, so it's our lips, our mouth, that must keep his knowledge. Then we want to move on to 5.7. <clears throat> Hear me now, therefore, O you children, and depart not from the words of my mouth. Know, know the word, learn the word, hide it in your heart, speak it out. Chapter 6, verse 20 through 23. My son, keep thy father's commandment, forsake not the law of thy mother, bind them continually upon thine heart, and tie them about thy neck. And when thou goest, it, the word, the wisdom of God, shall lead thee. When thou sleepest, it, the word, shall keep thee. And when thou awakest, it shall talk with thee. For the commandment is a lamp, the law is light, and the reproofs of instruction are the way of life. Chapter 7, verses 1 through 3. <clears throat> My son, my daughter, keep my words and lay up my commandments with thee. Store them up. Hide them away. Uh, David in Psalm 119.11 said, Thy word, O Lord, have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. He stored it there. Verse 2, Keep my commandments and live. Have life. Keep my law as the apple or the single most important thing in your life. Bind them upon thy fingers, write them upon the table of thine heart. And of course, this was speaking spiritually, but we know the Jews went around, had phylacteries around their foreheads with the scriptures written inside leather, and they had them on their hands and all over their body. They acted out physically, but not spiritually, what God had given them in the word. 724. Hearken unto me now, therefore, you children, and attend or give attention to the words of my mouth. Chapter 8, verse 1 through 21. Doth not my wisdom, God's wisdom, cry? It's not silent. God's wisdom is wanting to become involved with every one of us. Does not my understanding put forth her voice? Yes, it does. She, my wisdom, standeth at the top of high places, the palaces in the paths. She, the word of God, crieth at the gates, at the entry of the city, at the coming in at the doors. Unto you, O man, I call, and my voice is to the sons of man. O ye simple, understand my wisdom, and you fools, be of an understanding heart. <clears throat> Hear me, for I will speak of excellent things. And God says, the opening of my lips shall be right things. That's what he wants for us. Christ said, I can say nothing or do nothing except the Father show me. He said, well, God says, well, my opening of my lips shall be right things. God says, for my mouth shall speak truth. Wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth, God said, are in righteousness. There is nothing forward or perverse in them. <coughs> All my words are plain unto him that understandeth, that is by choice. And it's right, fit to them that find knowledge. Receive my instruction and not silver, knowledge rather than gold. For wisdom is better than rubies, and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared 
<coughs> to God's wisdom. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy, and the evil way, and the froward mouth do I hate. The mouth froward means to be wreathed with some other meaning than what you're speaking, to deceive. God says, I hate it. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. By me, kings reign and princes decree justice. By me, princes rule and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. God said, I love them. I'm able to produce for them that love me. And those that seek me early shall find me. Riches and honor are with me, yea, durable riches, everlasting, eternal riches and righteousness. My fruit, my word, lived out, acted out, is better than gold. Yea, than fine gold, and my revenue better than choice silver. I lead in the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of judgment. All of this, he says, and I want to know why. Verse 21. That I may cause those that love me to inherit substance, and I will fill their treasures. And of course, that's the word of God. Chapter 8, verse 32 through 35. <clears throat> now therefore hearken unto me, O you children, for blessed or blessed are they that keep my ways. Hear my instruction, and be wise, and refuse it not. Blessed is the man, the woman, the boy, the girl that heareth me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the posts of my doors. For whoso findeth me and my truth findeth life and shall obtain favor of the Lord. <clears throat> Chapter 9, verses 8 through 11. Rebuke not a scorner, lest he hate thee. Ah, but if you rebuke a wise man, he will love thee you. Give instruction to a wise man and he will be yet wiser. Teach a just man and he will increase in learning. The fear of the Lord, this reverence, this awe of God is the beginning of God's wisdom and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. For by me thy days shall be multiplied and the years of thy life shall be increased. It's chapter 10 verse 8, 13 and 14. I'm sorry. Chapter 10, 8, the wise in heart will receive commandments, but a pratting fool shall fall. 13, in the lips of him that hath understanding, God's understanding, God's wisdom is found. But a rod is for the back of him that is void of understanding, he chooses it not. 14, wise men lay up, store up knowledge, but the mouth of the foolish is near destruction. Chapter 10, verse 17. <clears throat> he is in the way of life. He's in the right path that keepeth my instruction. But he that refuses reproof, he erreth or sins. 21. The lips of the righteous do what? They feed many others. But fools die for the want of wisdom. Verse 23. It is as sport to a fool to do mischief. But a man of understanding, he has God's wisdom. Verse 31 and 32, the mouth of the just brings forth God's wisdom. But out of the forward tongue, but the forward tongue shall be cut out. 32, the lips of the righteous know what is acceptable with God. But the mouth of the wicked speaketh forwardness. Chapter 11, verse 9. A hypocrite, a double-minded person who says one thing, believes another thing, says another thing. A hypocrite with his mouth destroys his neighbor. But through knowledge shall the just be delivered. Verse 12, he that is void of God's wisdom despises his neighbor, but a man of understanding holdeth his peace. Chapter 12, verse 1. <clears throat> Whoso loveth God's instruction loves his knowledge, but he that hateth reproof is brutish. Verse 8. 
A man shall be commended according to his wisdom, but he that is of a perverse heart shall be despised. Verse 18 and 19. There is people that speak, or speaking like the piercing of a sword. The words that they speak are always ripping and tearing at others. But the tongue of the wise is health, marpe. The tongue of the wise is speaking God's word, and therefore it is medicine to the people that hear it. Whether they accept it or not, it is God's medicine of spiritual, physical, and material healing. Verse 19, the lip of truth, your speaking truth, shall be established forever. Think of that. As you speak God's truth, you are speaking eternal principles that will never pass away in eternity. But a lying tongue is just for a moment. Chapter 13, verse 1. A wise son hears his father's instruction, but a scorner heareth not rebuke. Verse 13. Whoso despises the word of God shall be destroyed, but he that feareth the commandments shall be rewarded. Verse 15 and 16. Good understanding giveth favor, but the way of the transgressor is hard. Jesus said, my yoke was easy, didn't he? But the way of the transgressor is hard, spiritually, physically, materially. 16. Every prudent man dealeth with God's knowledge, but a fool layeth open his folly, or exposes it. Chapter 13, verse 18. Poverty and shame shall be to him that refuses instruction, God's instruction. But he that regardeth reproof, or God's correction or word, shall be honored. Verse 20. He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Chapter 14, verse 3. In the mouth of the foolish is a rod of pride, but the lips of the wise shall preserve them. Verse 6 and 7. A scorner seeketh wisdom and findeth it not, but knowledge, God's knowledge is easy unto him. Unto him who? That understandeth. That is, he's accepting it and applying it in his life. That is the understanding. We read previously that with all of your getting, with all the wisdom and knowledge, get the understanding, the spiritual application in your life. That's what understanding is, knowing how that it applies. Verse 7, go or get away from the presence of a foolish man when thou perceive, perceivest him not in him the lips of knowledge. Verse 15, the simple believeth every word that's spoken, and our churches are full of them. But the prudent man looketh well to his going. 1425. A true witness delivereth souls with the truth, but a deceitful witness speaketh lies. 33. God's wisdom resteth in the heart of him that has the understanding, but that which is in the midst of fools is made known or revealed. 35. The king's favor is towards a wise servant, but his wrath is against him that causes shame. Chapter 15, verse 2. <clears throat> the tongue of the wise uses God's knowledge aright, but the mouth of fools poureth out foolishness. Verse 7. The lips of the wise disperse knowledge. You're a regular ATM, aren't you? Somebody comes up and pushes your button, you can dispense the knowledge of God. Whatever area, whatever category, whatever doctrine, you're ready to dispense it. But the heart of the foolish doeth not so. Verse 14, the heart of him that hath God's understanding seeks more of God's knowledge, but the mouth of fools feedeth on foolishness. Chapter 15, verse 21. Folly is joy to him that is destitute of God's wisdom, but a man of understanding, he walks uprightly or righteously. 31 through 33. The ear that heareth the reproof of life abideth or stays remains and continues among the wise. He that refuse God's instructions despises his own soul, but he that heareth God's word, reproof, correction, getteth understanding. 
The fear of the Lord, this awe, this reverence towards God, is the instruction of God's wisdom before honor comes humility. Chapter 16, verse 22 through 24. God's understanding is a wellspring of life unto him that hath it. It just keeps bubbling up, and you just keep speaking it and talking it and giving away. But the instruction of fools is folly. The heart of the wise teaches his mouth out of the abundance of the heart. Jesus said the mouth speaks. So the heart, you put the word in your heart, it teaches his mouth and addeth learning to his lips. 24, pleasant words, God's words, in harmony with God, are like a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and health. Marpe, medicine to his bones. Chapter 17, verse 24. <clears throat> God's wisdom is before him that hath God's understanding, but the eyes of a fool are in the ends of the earth. Verse 27, he that hates God's knowledge spares his word, and a man of understanding is of an excellent spirit. 18.4, the words of a man's mouth are as deep or like deep waters, and the wellspring of wisdom like a flowing brook. You can drink from a person who has that wisdom and knowledge. Verse 15. The heart of the prudent getteth God's knowledge, and the ear of the wise seeketh God's knowledge. Chapter 19, verse 8. He that getteth God's wisdom loveth his own soul. He that keepeth understanding shall find good. Verse 20. Hear God's counsel. Receive God's instruction that thou mayest be wise in your latter end. Chapter 19, verse 25. <clears throat> Smite a scorner, and the simple will beware, and reprove one that hath God's understanding, and he will understand knowledge. 27, and this you need to underline, and really pray about this. Cease, my son, to hear instruction that causes to err from the words of knowledge. One of the lessons that we'll be involved in is to leave or not to leave a church. We teach on that. And I use this as one of my key words. Cease to hear the instruction that causes to err from the words of knowledge. The church doesn't line up with the word of God. I'm out of there. Chapter 20, verse 5. <clears throat> Counsel in the heart of man is like deep water, but a man of understanding will draw out that from the Lord by the Holy Spirit. Chapter 20, verse 15. There is gold and a multitude of rubies, but the lips of knowledge, God's knowledge, are a precious jewel. Chapter 21, verse 11. When the scorner is punished, the simple is made wise, and when the wise is instructed, he receiveth God's knowledge. Verse 16, the man that wandereth out of the way of God's understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. And now in chapter 22, verse 17 through 21, here's the whole purpose of the word series. 22, 17, bow down thy ear and hear the words of the wise Apply by choice your heart unto my knowledge, God said, for it is a pleasant thing if thou keep them within thee, within thy spirit. For they, my word, shall withal be fitted in thy lips. The spirit will bring it back to your remembrance. The purpose that thy trust may be in the Lord, I have made known to thee this day, even to thee. Have I not written to thee excellent things in counsels and knowledge? Yes. Well, I've done it that I might make thee know the certainty, the absoluteness of the words of truth, that you might answer the words of truth to them that send unto thee. 23.12 <clears throat> Apply your heart unto my instruction. Apply your ears unto the words of my knowledge. Verse 15, my son, if your heart be wise, my, my heart, God said, shall rejoice, even mine. 
23:19 Hear thou my son and be wise and guide thy heart in my way. 23:23 23, 23 through 26 Buy the truth sell it not. Also my wisdom, my instruction and my understanding. The father of righteousness shall greatly rejoice. And he that begetteth a wise child shall have joy of him. Thy father and thy mother shall be glad, and she that bear thee shall rejoice. My son, give me thine heart, and let thine eyes observe my ways. 24, 3 through 5. Through God's wisdom is a house built. By understanding it is established. And by knowledge, God's knowledge, shall the chambers be filled with all the precious and pleasant riches. A wise man is strong, yea, a man of knowledge increases spiritual strength. 24.14, so, so shall the knowledge of my wisdom be unto thy soul. When thou hast found it, then there shall be a reward, and thy expectation shall not be cut off. 28.5, <coughs> Evil men understand not God's judgment word, but they that seek the Lord understand all things. Verse 7, Whoso keepeth the law is a wise son, but he that is a companion of riotous men shameth his father. Verse 9, He that turneth away his ear from hearing my law, even his prayer shall be an abomination. I keep running on the people I know are not serving God, and oh, God answers my prayers. No, he's not, dear friends. That's part of their deception. 29.3. Whoso loveth wisdom rejoices his father in heaven, but he that keepeth company with harlots spendeth his substance. Verse 18. This is a good one to remember. I've spoken this many times at missionary meetings. Where there is no vision, the people perish. And for years I thought, if I didn't have a vision, the people in Africa and India were going to perish. And God spoke to me one day, Eugene, he said, no, no, if you don't have the vision, you're the one that perishes. I'll send somebody else to India. You're the one that dies if you don't have it. Chapter 30, verse 5 through 6. Every word of God is pure, purified. He is a shield, God is, to them that put their trust in him. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. And of course, the admonition in Revelation tells us if we're adding, we're cursed. If we take away, we're cursed. In Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 2, Moses told the people the same thing when he brought them out of Egypt and read the law to them. He said, if you add, you're done. If you take away, you're done church is so careless about that today. 1 Corinthians 1, 24. Moving just to finish up here with the New Testament. 1 Corinthians <clears throat> chapter 1, verse 24 through 27. 1 Corinthians 1, 24. But unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God, because the foolishness of God, if there was such a thing, there isn't, but he's making a play here. The foolishness of God is still wiser than men. And the weakness of God, if he had any, would still be stronger than men. What a statement. For you see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. That is, they don't respond, and therefore the invitation is never fulfilled. But God has chosen the fool, foolish things of the world to confound the wise. What's more foolish than having to humble yourself and confess your sins? What's more foolish than having to confess a Savior that you've never seen? That's foolishness. How foolish is it to raise your voice and speak in a language you never heard? That's really foolish. 
God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. Colossians 2, 2 and 3, that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love, and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding, to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And our comment here is that all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge begin with a relationship with Jesus Christ. Now, let's launch into Second Thessalonians here for just a moment <clears throat> to continue this of why there is such deception in the church today and we'll finish with this. This is a key verse I use probably as much or more than anything in the Bible and having to counsel and deal with people. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10 through 12. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them, them who, them that perish, why do they perish? Because they receive not, and here's the key, the love of the truth. It isn't just memorizing scripture. It's you must have a love of God's truth. I've never seen God. I've never seen Christ, never seen the Holy Ghost. But I have seen his word. They perish because they have not received the love of the truth. What would that do for them? That they might be saved spiritually, physically, and materially. And for this cause or this reason, because they don't have a love for the word of God, for this reason, this cause, God sends them a strong delusion. God is sending any person that doesn't have a love for the truth of God, God sends a strong delusion to them. Understand where it's coming from, that they should believe a lie. Because if you don't want the truth, God must see that you get what you are asking for, and that's going to be a lie. If you don't want the truth, he'll give you what you want. Verse 12, that they all might be damned, who is going to be damned that believe not the truth of God, but they have pleasure in unrighteousness. And much of that pleasure in unrighteousness, dear friends, is in the midst of religion. Many other verses in Scripture describe the consequences involved in man's free will choices concerning God's offers of his wisdom and knowledge to his creation. Acceptance of which implies obedience to, God's wisdom and knowledge result in the best that God has for each individual. However, rejection of, or disobedience to, God's wisdom and knowledge result in either natural consequences or judgment from God. Many things happen outside of God's will. God must allow them to happen because of man's free will, which was given to him by God. God does intervene in man's free will, at times, to accomplish his will, but never at the expense of that person's eternal spiritual choices. This tension between God's omnipotence and man's free will is explored in a future course. Father, we thank you for your word. We ask that you push this deep into our mind, into our heart, into our spirit. God, we can understand that if you're comparing, your word is more valuable than silver, gold, and precious stones. Father, we want your word. We will have a love for it because we choose to love your word. Because we're going to live it and act it out and share it with others. Thank you, Father, tonight. In Jesus' name, amen.